In the earlier sessions, you've seen various techniques to improve your memory power. Now, let's see how to apply those techniques. Please switch off your mobile phones and follow all the instructions carefully. There are many students who get scared when they look at their fat and large textbooks. They begin to doubt themselves and get various doubts about their ability and if they will be able to remember the whole portion or not. We will show you simple tricks to make the book friendly by different study methods of refined mind. We can broadly divide the study methods into three groups. First, the ingenious method. Second, the judicious method. Third, the mechanical method. Study methods. Ingenious Judicious, Mechanical Now let's see the uses of ingenious method of which linking is the first part. Using the linking method, you can remember random objects. If they are in a serial order, you can use peg words too. How to master a foreign language You may decide to learn a new language for your own reasons. A. Personal interest B. You enjoy the language. C. Job or business opportunity in that state or country. D. Your friend or relative may be living in that country. E. You want to enjoy a holiday abroad. Whatever may be the reason, this session will definitely help you. With a little bit of practice, you will be able to master the basics of any language within a short span of 10 days. For example, let's take the Spanish word Kabhize. The ingenious method. Steps to be followed. Convert that foreign word into easily understandable and memorable form. Secondly, if the word is too long, cut it into pieces. Thirdly, that means you should be easily able to visualize them into pictures. Let us take one word, Kabhize. Can you guess which language it is from? In Spanish, Kabhize means head. Your first step is split the word into pieces. So that makes it Kabhize. Now you can easily visualize Kab, B and He. Second step, visualize Kab, B and He. Third step, Link all these words to form head. To do this, you could try visualizing a large taxi cab filled with giant bees. On top of the cab, visualize one more image of a big head carrying hay. Close your eyes and carefully visualize this image in your mind. After practicing some words like this, you will develop an ability to convert words into images or a group of images. As soon as you listen to new words, your mind will start creating images along with its meaning. Now let's take a look at some more examples. For example, let's take the French word for garden. Jardin. Jardi can be split into jar and dining. Second step, visualize a jar. A very big jar flying in the sky, dropped on a dining area. Third step, link all these words to form garden. Visualize a jar, a very big jar, flying in the sky, dropped on a dining area. That area immediately gets converted to a garden. If you sincerely attempt to see this image, I assure you that the word Shardi and the word garden will forever remain linked together in your memory. Alternatively, you can also visualize things like this. Visualize a lovely green garden. In this garden, you could imagine that there is a tall glass jar and the dean of your college is imprisoned in it. Visualize pictures in A, B and C. A for action. B for big or small, C for crazy. Make illogical connections, make it funny, visualize abnormal sizes. You may wonder how these illogical and stupid visualizations help you remember. The thing is, these visualizations work in the same way as the signposts do on the roads. 
guide you to your destination with subtle hints. These visualizations give directions to your mind and it ends up remembering by following the directions given by the visualizations. Start applying these methods. Until we meet again, enjoy every bit of life. Let us see some more uses of the linking method. We meet a lot of new people every day. How do you remember their names? The most common reason why we forget anything is because of lack of attention and that we are mostly preoccupied. There is a simple technique to overcome this body present, mind absent kind of state. It is called the traffic lights. Red, stop all your thoughts. Orange, get ready to listen. Green, pay complete attention. You can also use the verbal technique to memorize a person's name when you meet them for the first time. Firstly, register the person's name and remember the way it is said to you. Repeat the person's name in your mind. Make a positive comment about the name and use the person's name aloud as soon as possible. You can remember a person's name by using linking. Firstly, associate the name with something meaningful. That's easy with names like bales. Picture bales of hay. If it's something more difficult like Toyota, just visualize a Toyota car being driven by Tommy. Secondly, Note distinctive features of that person's face. Thirdly, form a visual association between the face and the name. After you've done all you can to remember the person's name, you need to rehearse the name if you want to remember it. Repeat the name to yourself again in about 15 seconds. If you've met several people, Repeat the names to yourself while picturing the faces before the end of the event. The more often you can repeat the person's name early, the more likely they will stick in your head. Fifthly, remembering names can be an important social skill. We all like to think that other people remember us. The ability to remember names of even slight acquaintances is highly regarded. Let's see some examples now. For example, if you have to remember this name, Badruddin Thyabji. The pronunciation of the name itself seems difficult and you are supposed to remember it now. We come across such complicated names not only in subjects like history and biology but also in our regular lives. Now we have to remember the name Badruddin Thyabji. First, break the name into pieces. Bad, Rud, Din, Thya, Ji. Imagine one person had bad rude Din Bhar in Thailand eating a Bajji. So you can recall the story of bad rude Din Thya Ji very easily. Let us see one more example. Mahadev Govind Ranade. How can you remember this name? Imagine. One person looking like a Mahadev, that means Shankar Bhagwan, and he starts chanting Govinda, Govinda, like Tirupati pilgrims. And he is carrying a big statue of Lord Balaji and running the entire day. If you connect this scenario, you can easily remember Mahadev Govind Ranade. Now that we've seen examples of Indian names, Let's see a few examples of foreign names. Pancrazio is an Italian name which means a supreme ruler. Visualize funny pancreas and you can connect it a supreme ruler. Now this is a Spanish name, Beethoven. It sounds like B throw oven. Visualize a big B thrown into an oven. Like this, you can remember any person's name by visualizing a crazy story in your mind. In this manner, you can remember any name by visualizing a crazy story around it. With linking, you can remember and revise an entire lesson. To revise and remember, we have to follow these steps. Firstly, read the lesson three to four times. Do not mug up the questions and answers. First, when you're reading it, try to understand the topic thoroughly. 
understand the purpose of the lesson. Secondly, underline the keywords. Find out the important words in that paragraph or in that lesson. Please remember, do not underline the filler words. Review the keywords once you're done. During this review, either you can add or remove some words. Thirdly, convert the keywords into images. Use your creativity. We understood that brain can remember information easily if it's in the form of images. It is difficult for the brain to remember information if it is in the form of words. Fourthly, link the keywords. Already you know the use of linking. It is a very powerful way to trigger the memory. Link by following A, B, C. A for action, B for big or small, C for crazy. Fifthly, revise the keywords. Immediately after linking, revise the words three to four times in your mind. In this way, you can remember the keywords perfectly and you won't get confused. If you're able to remember the keywords, almost the entire lesson is in your mind. Whenever you want, you will be able to revise this. Sixthly, ask questions to the keywords. Ask questions like, when did it happen? Where did it happen? Who created it? What are the effects? How did it happen? Questioning alone is not enough. You should be able to get the answer from your mind. If you're not getting the answers, immediately don't look into your textbooks. Puzzle your mind for some time. Keep thinking. Finally, verify the textbook and cross-check with the content. Seventhly, write a summary to your answer in your own words. Start writing summaries of lessons in your own words. Here, you have to improve your communication skills. Practice creative writing. Practice content writing. Practice writing quickly. Learn how to write effectively so that the readers can understand perfectly. In case of exams, the examiner has to understand the answer. Presenting the content is a skill. It comes only by practice. Eighthly, review your answers. After writing your answers, check with the textbook or your notebook. And if anything is missing, make your answer more meaningful. And ninthly, once again review your keywords. Take each keyword, review it and ask questions. Let us take a look at a practical example. You can refer to our workbook or download the lesson from our website. Let's take a look at the lesson we took for our demo. The name of the lesson is Disaster Management. Let me remind you about the steps that need to be followed. Read the lesson three to four times. Underline the keywords. Convert the keywords into images. Link the keywords. Revise the keywords. Ask questions to the keywords. Write a summary to your answer in your own words. Review your answer. Rewrite your answer once again with better words. And lastly, once again, review your keywords. First, study the lesson three to four times. With a pencil, start underlining some roots or keywords. 
What are the key words in the first paragraph? Underline those important words. Out of those important words, find out which are the most important keywords. For example, here we feel it is Katrina. Just underline Katrina. Similarly, scan and understand the second paragraph. What is the keyword here? We have underlined cyclone or disaster. Follow the same method for all the paragraphs and find out keywords from each paragraph. Each paragraph may contain two or three keywords. From the lesson disaster management, we have finalized these keywords. Cyclone, Katrina, forest fires, valuable assets, community people, national equipment, tsunami, approach, prime minister, act, collectors, savings, steps. Now that we're done with two steps, let's move on to the next step. Now that you can figure out the keywords, apply this to the linking method. Sit in your refined mind posture, listen carefully and start visualizing everything in pictures. Imagine that you wake up one morning and you find out that there's a huge cyclone. Now, see that from the cyclone, Katrina Kef is coming out. Imagine she hugged you and said, Come on, let's start flying. See that both of you are flying together. Then she shows you that there is a forest with a burning fire. Now, visualize that you've jumped into the fire to save the forest and you find a lot of valuable assets like buildings, jewelry, computers, etc. Just when you were about to take the valuable assets, you realize that there's an earthquake and that people belonging to different communities have come to seek shelter. People from different communities were united and holding Indian flags. They started keeping those flags on the big equipments. Now visualize that even a tsunami bursts out and that the whole country is under trouble. Now visualize an approach road where the Prime Minister is doing some actions and to meet the Prime Minister, a group of collectors are walking. After meeting the Prime Minister, visualize that they entered a savings bank and they were astonished to find the steps made of gold and they all fall asleep on the golden steps. Now start saying the words from LinkedIn. Look at the screen. Cyclone Katrina Forest fires Valuable assets Community people National Equipment Tsunami Approach Prime Minister Act Collectors Savings Steps with these words, you can remember the story and with this story, you can remember the entire lesson. Let's see how to do it. Now ask questions to the keywords. What is Katrina? Katrina is a hurricane. When did it happen? Where did it happen? Mississippi. What are the effects of Katrina? When you keep asking these type of questions to the keywords, you will be able to recollect the entire paragraph. Now ask yourself how many paragraphs will be there in each lesson? Hardly about 25 to 30 paragraphs, isn't it? If you consider two keywords for each paragraph, it comes down to about 50 to 60 keywords. Use linking method and you can easily remember these 50 to 60 words which will in turn help you remember the whole lesson. a doubt. Can your brain actually remember all these stories? Well, 
Your brain can literally remember thousands and thousands of stories. It has tremendous power. So go ahead without any limitations and constraint and believe in yourself. Another technique of the ingenious method is the advanced location method. You can apply this method to remember point-wise answers for any question. Let's check how to do this. Now, let us check out the locations in the periodic table. Earlier, we discussed the positions of numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, where 0 is the entry point, 1 is the left side nearest corner, 2 is the left side center of the room, and so on. We can use the advanced location method to remember point-wise answers to any question. Let us check out how we can remember. Suppose there are some 8 points that are appearing on the screen. First, study all the points and find out the key words. The first point is positioning of national disaster force at different locations. Here, the key word is force. First, you visualize a room related to this answer. For example, here you can visualize a room from the meteorological department. Visualize an army force standing at position number 1 and applying force on the wall. Second point is adequate importance to be given to the preparedness and mitigation measures. The key word here is preparedness. Visualize at position number 2, that is the left side center of wall, that somebody is preparing an equipment. The third point is setting up and strengthening of an early warning system. The key word is warning system. Visualize at point number 3, that is the left side farthermost corner wall, warning lights blinking. The fourth point is scientific and technological support. The key word here is scientific. Visualize at position number 4, that is opposite to the entrance, one scientist doing experiments with technology. The fifth point is creation of national database for emergency management. The keyword is database. Visualize at point number 5, that is the right side farthermost corner, there is one scientist noting down the results of the experiments in a book. The sixth point is Guidelines are also to be in place for dealing with different types of disasters including urban floods, landslides, house collapses, etc. The keyword is guidelines. Visualize at point number 6, the right side center of the wall, that there are some people drawing lines with the guidebook. The seventh point is relief measures such as state transport, construction of earthquake resistant buildings and insurance cover. The key word here is relief. Visualize at point number 7, that is the right side nearest corner of the wall, an old man feeling relieved and relaxed. The eighth point is financial assistance from banks and other institutions too will be laid down as a part of the policy replacing the knee-jerk reactions. The key word is finance or money. Visualize at position number 8, that is the center of the room, that there is a lot of money coming out and you are sorting out the money in order and counting. Hi, hope you understood the concept. In this way, you can pick out the key words from each sentence, convert them into images and visualize. Point number 1, at position number 1. Point number 2. At position number 2. Point number 3. At position number 3. And so on. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose you want to remember the fundamental duties of an Indian citizen. The fundamental duties of an Indian citizen are 1. Abide by the constitution and respect its ideals and institutions. 2. To cherish and follow the noble ideas which inspired our national struggle for freedom. 3. 
to uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. 4. To defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so. 5. To promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood. 6. To value and preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture. 7. To protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. 8. To develop the scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform. 9. To safeguard public property and absorb violence. 10. To strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement. Suppose you want to remember the answer to the question, what are the fundamental duties of an Indian citizen? Imagine the parliament building and visualize different locations to remember different points. Let us consider point number five. To promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India, transcending religious, linguistic and regional diversities to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women. To remember this point, first find out what are the key words. Harmony, all, dignity, women. At this location 5, visualize the harmonium, the musical instrument being played by all religious people and they are respecting women. Visualization should be in A, B and C. A for action. B for big or small. C for crazy. This is the best and easiest method to remember point wise. Since you are using your right and left brain simultaneously, you remember easily. You can revise anywhere, be it a park, bus journey, cinema hall, anywhere. You don't need a textbook. And remember another thing. Knowing is knowing. Knowing is not doing. Doing is doing. Now take a break from these modules and start applying these techniques. Hope these help in memorizing your syllabus better. Until we meet again, enjoy every bit of your life. Welcome back to Refined Mind. Just take a look at the screen. 172122334111618124123226283027 How much time do you think you need to remember this number? Even if you remember this for some time, you may get confused recollecting it, isn't it? Do you think you can remember such a huge number? Don't worry. If you follow this method that I will share with you, you can remember any number easily. How do you eat a big cake? That's right. Cut it into small pieces. Similarly, anything that looks complicated can be made into small pieces. For example, big targets can be made into small tasks. Big activities can be cut down into small works. Big books can be made into small chapters and big chapters can be made into small paragraphs. As the saying goes, yard by yard life is hard, but inch by inch life's a cinch. Our memory formula is, first, complicated things change to simple forms. Second, convert them into images. Third, visualize the images. Fourth, make linking with the images. Fifth, Review This friendly name is Teak. You know the peg words 17 Teak, 21 Net, 22 Nun, 33 Mummy, 41 Rod, 16 Taj, 18 Thief, 12 Tin, 14 Tire, 13 Tom, 22 Nun, 26 Notch, 
28 knife 30 mouse 27 neck Now we've converted the big number into small numbers and the small numbers into images. Now start linking these images. Hope you remember how to do linking. First, posture. Second, visualization. Third, story. The story should have A, B and C. A for action, B for big or small and C for crazy. Okay, let's get started now. Imagine that you are carrying a big log of teak wood with you. A thief threw a net on the teak to snatch it away from you. And when you tried to catch the net, it flew away and fell on a nun. She gave it to her mummy as a gift. Mummy took the gift and she picked up a big rod to Taj Mahal where she saw the thief was escaping and then he ran and jumped into a big tin can. From the tin, he saw that Tom from Tom and Jerry was playing with a tire and that the tire was rotating very fast. Suddenly, Tom left the tire and it went to the nun who was standing at the gate and she started dancing which means Nach in Hindi. She picked up a big knife and cut the thread that the mouse had around its neck and freed the mouse. To prepare this story, it just takes two minutes. Start preparing now. So, do you remember the story? Now decode the story. Convert all the images into numbers. First one is teak. Teak means 17. Next is net. Net is 21. Next is none. That is 22. She went to mummy and mummy is 33. After mummy, it is a rod. And rod is 41. After the rod is Taj. And Taj is 16. The thief is 18. Then the thief ran into a tin can and tin is 12. What is in the tin can? A tire. The tire is 14. Tom started playing with the tire. Tom is 13. After Tom is the nun. The nun is 22. After the nun, it is the knife, which is 28. After the knife, it is the mouse. The mouse is 30. After the mouse, it is the neck. The neck is 27. Using this method, you can remember any number of hard words without having to write it anywhere. Let's take a look at a few examples. Let us see how you can remember mobile numbers. For example, consider one person called John. John's mobile number is 9246-324148. What is 92? Pun. What is 46? Raja. What is 32? Moon. What is 41? Rod. What is 48? Proof. Remember once again, whenever you do linking, you have to follow A, B and C. A for action, B for big or small 
and C for crazy. Now link and create and visualize a crazy story and see for yourself how easy it is to remember mobile numbers of various persons. Now prepare a small story. Imagine a small sized John like a Lilliput opened his big mobile. From his mobile, bun started falling down. Raja came, took the bun and threw it on the moon. On the moon, one big rod started shining. That rod started piling on the roof. History dates. Let us see that method. How do you eat a big cake? That's right, cut it into small pieces. Similarly, anything that looks complicated can be made into small pieces. For example, big targets can be made into small tasks. Big activities can be cut down into small works. Big books can be made into small chapters and big chapters can be made into small paragraphs. As the saying goes, yard by yard life is hard, but inch by inch life's a cinch. Our memory formula is first, complicated things change to simple forms. Second, convert them into images. Third, visualize the images. Fourth, make linking with the images. Fifth, review. Let us see how to remember history dates by applying the above steps. 1508-1947 India's independence Peg word for 15 is towel. Peg word for 08 is sofa. Peg word for 19 is tub. Peg word for 47 is rock. Now you have to link these objects. Add one more object that is the Indian flag since this date is India's independence. So you have to do linking with these objects that is the national flag, towel, sofa, tub and rock. You can visualize like this. Imagine you're climbing a flag post to tie the Indian flag but you found that instead of the flag there is a towel hanging. You get very angry and you start removing the towel. When you were removing the towel, you fell on a sofa. As soon as you fell on the sofa, you bounced back and fell into a big tub. You started taking a bath in the tub and at that time, rocks started falling down. Connect the words to their numbers and you can remember the importance of the date. The event, date, month, and year. Event being Columbus discovered West Indies. Date the 12th. Month October. Year 1492. Mental images of peg words. Columbus, West Indies. Peg word for 12 is tin. For 10 is toes. For 40 is tire. For 92 is bun. Visualize the story. Imagine a colorful bus entered in West Indies. He opened the calendar. From the calendar, a big tin is falling down. The tin falls down on toes. With toes, you hit a big tire. Inside the tire, somebody is pasting bun. Remarks. Visualize an A, B, C. That is action, big or small and crazy. Like this, you can remember any history dates very easily. Let us see one more example. Event Napoleon announced himself as king. Date 18. Month May. Year 1804. Mental image or peg words Napoleon announcing loudly, keeping the crown on. For 18, the peg word is thief. For 05, the peg word is sale. For 18, the peg word is thief. And for 04, the peg word is sir. Visualize a story. Imagine Napoleon has taken one big crown. After keeping the crown on his head, he started announcing by seeing a big calendar. When he was watching the calendar, a thief took it and started sailing. When the thief was sailing, 
he met his father who started saluting to his son as sir for his accomplishment remarks visualize in a b and c by applying this technique you can easily remember history dates date of births telephone numbers mobile numbers back locker numbers etc let us see one more example event neil armstrong landed on moon date 20th month july year 1969 mental images or peg words for neil armstrong it is moon peg word for 20 is nose peg word for 07 is sack peg word for 19 is tub and peg word for 69 is g visualize a story now imagine neil armstrong landed on moon and started watching the calendar to know what was the date when he was observing the calendar a big nose came he kept that nose on a sack of bags after keeping the nose on the sack the sack started falling in a big tub see that in a big tub armstrong took a big jeep and started driving on the moon remarks visualize in a b and c it took us hardly 2 to 3 minutes to create this story but it is worth spending those 2 to 3 minutes this method is better than mugging up we cannot remember easily when we mug up because our brain cannot visualize it let us see one more example for remembering important events event being alexander fleming invented penicillin the date is the 30th the month is september year being 1928 mental images or peg words alexander flames experiment pencil injection calendar the peg word for 30 is mouse the peg word for 09 is soap the peg word for 19 is tub and the peg word for 28 is knife wish will i the story imagine alexander in flames doing an experiment he took a big pencil the pencil turned into an injection with the injection he started punching the calendar from the calendar a big mouse jumped out with a soap in its hand the soap started growing bigger and fell into a tub see that from the tub a knife is coming out remarks visualize in a b and c apart from the earlier methods there is one more option for you to remember history dates and numbers before we discuss that method let's revise how to create peg words with phonetics let's take a look at some examples hope you remember this one is t and d two is n 3 is m 4 is r 5 is l 6 is j or ch 7 is k and c 8 is f h and ph 9 is p and b and 0 is s or z you can follow these steps convert the numbers into alphabets from phonetics with these alphabets create words or phrases for images visualize these images let's take a look at some examples 320 commencement of gupta era the golden age of hindu india three replaces with m two replaces with n zero replaces with s create one word with m n s word can be mines m i n e s mine visualize when gupta became king gold is flowing from mines 532 bc pythagoras started his school in greece Five replaces L, three replaces M, two replaces N. Create one word with 
L M N. The word can be L E M O N. Lemon. Visualize when Pythagoras started a big school. From the school calendar, a big lemon is falling down. 327 BC. Alexander invades India. Three replaces M. Two replaces N. Seven replaces K. Create one word with M, N. K. The word can be M O N K E Y. Monkey. Visualize when Alexander came to invade India, a big monkey started fighting with him. Wasn't that fun? See how easy and simple it is for you to remember things. Now let's see how to use the ingenious method to remember various formulae. For example, to remember this formula. 3CT plus 4DG is equal to 9RL. Our memory formula is first, complicated things change to simple forms. Second, convert them into images. Third, visualize the images. Fourth, make linking with the images. Fifth, review. Now let us see how to convert this formula into pictures. You may be knowing how to convert numbers into pictures. For example, 1 is equal to Thai, 2 is equal to Ni, 3 is equal to Ma, 4 is equal to Rai, 5 is equal to Lo, 6 is equal to Jo, etc. Now let's see how to convert alphabets into images. Convert alphabets which are capitals into animal names. For example, capital A stands for ant, capital B stands for bear, capital C stands for cat, capital D stands for donkey, capital E stands for elephant, capital F for frog, etc. From A to Z, we can write animal names in capital letters. Convert the alphabets which are in small letters into some objects. For example, small a stands for apple, small b stands for boy, small c stands for can, small d stands for doll, small e stands for egg, small f stands for fig, small g stands for gold, etc. From a to z, convert small letters into objects. Now let us see how to convert symbols into images. For example, the symbol plus looks like red cross. It can be visualized as a hospital cross. The symbol minus looks like a Tamilian's vibhuti. The symbol cross looks like the danger symbol. The symbol divided by looks like a seesaw in a park. The symbol is equal to looks like a railway track. The symbol root of looks like the wheelbarrow in a supermarket. All it takes is a little bit of creativity and imagination and you can convert anything into visual images. If you think you can, you can. If you think you cannot, you cannot. Both ways you're right. Never say I can't. Say how can I? Now let us check how to remember this formula. 3CT plus 4DG is equal to 9RL. Our memory formula is first, complicated things change to simple forms. Second, convert them into images. Third, visualize the images. Fourth, make linking with the images. Fifth, review. Visualize and create a story of A, B and C. A for action, B for big or small and C for crazy. Imagine your ma growing taller and taller. The ma sat on a big cat and started chasing a tiger. The tiger got scared and approached Jesus. Jesus said go to Rai. Rai was sitting on a donkey and was kissing a gorilla. The gorilla started running on the railway track. 
on the railway track imagine there is a big box when you open the big box from that box a rabbit jumped out and started chasing a leopard now start decoding the objects into alphabets numbers and symbols ma is 3 cat is c tiger is t jesus is plus rai is 4 donkey is d gorilla is g railway track is equal to box is 9 rabbit is r leopard is l now write down all the alphabets numbers and symbols in their respective order you'll get 3 ct plus 4 dg is equal to 9 rl in this manner you can remember any formulae dates of birth historical dates any mobile number bank locker numbers or anything our memory formula is first complicated things change to simple forms second convert them into images third visualize the images fourth make linking with the images fifth review the next method is mnemonics mnemonics are memory devices that help learners recall large pieces of information especially in the form of a list like characteristics steps stages paths faces etc According to a study made by Gerald R Miller in 1967, mnemonics increased recalling power. He found that students who used mnemonics devices increased their test score up to 77%. Mnemonics are very simple. In fact, already you might be following that technique albeit unknowingly. The first letter of each word in a list of items is used to make a name of a person or a thing. Sometimes the items can be rearranged to form a recollectable name. For example, when you want to achieve the goals, the goal should be smart. That means you might have heard this one smart. In this, S is specific, M is measurable, A is achievable r is realistic t is time bound by taking the first alphabet from each word we've created one familiar word that is smart which is easy to remember one more example to remember nine planets is my very educated mother just showed us nine planets you might have heard about this phrase in your childhood You can recollect the nine planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, etc. using the simple phrase. You'd probably prefer your doctor to know the difference between cyanate and cyanide. Cyanate sounds like I ate and cyanide sounds like I died. Cyanide is fatal for humans. These methods are very easy. Once you start practicing these techniques, it becomes a subconscious activity. A gentle reminder knowing is knowing knowing is not doing doing is doing keep practicing these techniques religiously till you get perfect until we meet again enjoy every bit of life thank you and bye bye Welcome to Refine Mind. Now let's take a look at another study method, the judicious method. It is a very easy method of learning. It is a quality that all of us are born with. Judicious method comprises of five wives and one husband. Now you must be wondering, what is this five wives and one husband? No 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 it is not about a person in our case the five wives are what why where when and who during monsoon when the lightning and thundering happens first you see the lightning and then you hear the sound do you know why very simple it's because light travels faster than sound 
why do they leave the gap between the two rails the simple logic behind that is that in summer metal expands and in winter they contrast that is why they leave a gap please remember that mathematics and science are two subjects that you have to understand do not mug up the easiest method to learn is to first understand the concept and then apply the judicious method that means you have to ask the five wives questions that is what when where who and why and the poor husband's question is how why the lightning happens where the lightning happens when the lightning happens how the lightning happens what are the effects of lightning remember just asking the questions is not enough the thing you have to do after asking questions is to find out the answer for those questions through various sources like textbooks internet etc search read and understand thoroughly and apply revision technique as we discussed earlier to remember the matter for a longer period of time while you are studying technical subjects apply this method to apply this technique first you have to understand the concept this method not only makes it easy for you to remember the lesson but also gives you peace before the exam you are relieved and without any stress before exam and that is the ideal way to learn let's take an example from math what is a plus b whole square Almost every student even someone who hates mathematics will know the answer to this formula A plus B whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab Let us see how you can teach very young students By improving your analytical power it is easy for you to remember subjects like mathematics and science Let me share a story with you Long time ago there was a person sitting under a tree When he was sitting and thinking about something all of a sudden an apple fell on his head He looked up and thought to himself Why is it that the apple fell down Why didn't the apple go up After asking these questions to himself he started analyzing and trying to find answers to his questions In this process He found the law of gravitation which is followed all over the world even today and we all know that great personality is none other than Sir Isaac Newton Now the point to be noted is not that Newton found this law the point is why only Newton found it so many apples have fallen on so many people before Newton so many people simply walked and ignored but it was newton who questioned first he worked on finding the answers as well that is why he was very successful in finding the answers and went on to become a great scientist one simple thing to be kept in mind is that everyone has only 24 hours in a day and everyone has the same ability what makes you different from the others is how you utilize your time and your ability curiosity dedication and analytical mind will only make you better than the rest when it comes to subjects like science and mathematics your curiosity makes you a genius what where when who which and how are the questions that you need to keep asking time and again and then look to find their answers after the judicious method the next method of learning is mechanical method In the ingenious method we use our right brain most of the time in the judicious method we use our left brain most of the time in the mechanical method you use the power of your subconscious mind mechanical means doing something mechanically without giving it much of thought it is an action imprinted in your mind just like a reflex you do not think you do not analyze you do it within an instant this method is also called the by heart method and in the mechanical method we use our subconscious mind most of the time almost all the offices have a printer if you notice it functions to print 
It keeps on printing mechanically irrespective of whether there's a white paper, FO size paper, small paper, colored paper, bag or even a book. It just prints. This is called mechanical work. In the mechanical method, you involuntarily send the information mechanically so many times that it gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. In the mechanical method, you involuntarily send the information mechanically so many times that it gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. Once the subconscious mind accepts it over a number of times, it will remember it. How do children learn their mother tongue in spite of nobody teaching them how to speak? They listen to people speaking the language again and again and again and they simply notice and grasp the language. Similarly, if a person shifts to a new state, he doesn't know the native language and faces a lot of problem in communicating with the natives. But if you see after a few months, that person would have grasped the meaning of a few sentences and doesn't face that big a problem in communicating with the natives. This is because over a period of time, he has noticed and learned from the people around him and grasped the basics of the language. The human brains have neurons called mirror neurons which help in learning by repeating something. If you repeatedly listen to something or read something again and again, it gets saved in your subconscious mind and you can remember it for a long time. Let us understand another technique called the high by method. Through this method, you can easily remember poems, verses and shlokas. Let us see how to use this method. For example, some poems, verses, shlokas have to be remembered the way they are. There is nothing to understand in it and there is nothing to link. For such things, no amount of techniques or methods can help you and you only have to buy hard them to remember it. Let us learn a new technique today called the high buy method. To do this, you need some white or color drawing sheets. Every Saturday evening, first go through the subject covered in the last week. That is Monday to Saturday. Note down the topics which you have to buy heart. In your subjects, you can learn some content by linking method. Some things you can learn with the peg words, something you can do with the advanced location method, some things with the judicious method. Apply all these methods wherever you can use them. Still, you will come across some content on which you cannot apply any of the above methods. In such cases, you only have to apply the mechanical method. On a drawing sheet, write down with a marker pen in big letters so that you should be able to read it easily. Prepare three to four such posters. Once prepared, paste them on your wall. Now the real game starts. As soon as you wake up, glance at the poster and say hi. Don't keep staring or don't spend too much time in front of the posters. Just glance and move away. While going out, say bye and go out. Every time you enter your room for any work, once glance at the poster and say hi. And while going out, say bye and just move out. Remember, as soon as you get up, say hi. When you go out of your room, say bye. As soon as you get up, say hi. When you go out of your room, say bye. Every time, whenever you're entering or leaving your room, you have to say hi or bye. If you continue this practice for one week, what you have written on the poster will be imprinted in your brain without any effort from your end. After one week, if you want, you can keep the posters or you can also remove them. But it is better to keep the posters related to the subjects than to keep posters related to movies or actors and actresses. Let's check the power of this method. Generally, we enter our room at least 20 to 25 times in a day. That means daily you'll be glancing at the poster at least 20 into 2 times. That's 40 times. And every week you will be glancing at the poster for 40 into 7 times. That is 280 times. No wonder the content of the poster gets imprinted in your brain without you having to put any effort. 
Let us take some examples. Do you know the caption of Nokia? I'm sure most of you would instantly say connecting people without having to think at all. It is because we've come across the same thing various times via TV, newspaper, radio, etc. You did not put any effort, neither did you sit down and by heart the caption, but you remember them perfectly. Nokia, Airtel, Videocon, Samsung, etc. are some of the examples who advertise intensely on various media and we all remember their captions, their ad tones, their exact words. Just imagine, you don't put any concentration, you're doing various things while watching ads, yet you remember them so distinctly only by looking or hearing. Then, if you consciously glance at the posters daily for a week, you will surely remember the content for a long period of time. To improve your memory, you can also use some other methods like flashcards. Flashcards means small cards which are the size of visiting cards or playing cards. You can write down things what you want to remember and keep them in your pocket. Whenever you get leisure time, you can take those flashcards and go through them to remember them. We will learn some other methods, but before that, Please apply these methods. Keep practicing and keep learning, keep enhancing your memory. Remember, knowing is knowing. Knowing is not doing. Doing is doing. Hope you've learned a lot from these sessions. Keep practicing and applying these techniques and enhance your memory power. Till we meet again, enjoy every bit of your life. Bye and take care.